Hey everyone, we hope you're doing well. In this snapshot today, we're gonna to go once again beyond our textbook and cover the topic of ethical autonomous vehicles or self-driving cars. Uh, it's a pretty provocative topic. The gist is uh, there's a lot of effort going into making self-driving cars, cars that operate uh, without humans driving them. Uh, using all sorts of what are called algorithms that we'll talk a little bit about later in this video. Uh, we're going to look at this topic in one very small particular way. There's a lot of ways to look at it, but we want that way to be fun and exciting, uh, and, and hopefully it will support our, our discussion this week. So uh, to start, go ahead and visit this link. Um, this link will take you to a page uh, by a really wonderful artist and designer named Matthew Cherubuni. Uh, if you click this, I, I'm going to follow this as well, um, and you should see a page like this titled Ethical Autonomous Vehicles. And uh, what Matthew's done, he's designed basically um, a way that you can uh, simulate. It's almost like a video game that you can download and simulate different scenarios uh, of se where self-driving cars are, are operating, right? So in different scenarios, they use different types of what are called algorithms to run. Uh, we're going to look at a few of those in a second. For those who have never heard the word algorithm, it's, it's basically a set of rules that a computer, or in this case, a self-driving car, uh, follows or operates by. Okay, so this is the page. If you scroll down, uh, you'll see this little download link here. Uh, you can actually download, and we encourage you to do this. It's not necessary, but we really encourage you to do this. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this uh, in just a moment. But um, this is where you download uh, the software that Matthew's made available for Windows, Mac, or whatever platform you're working on. Um, so I'm going to actually, there's a, there's a uh, video here, I'm going to make it a little bigger and we're just going to slowly walk through about three minutes of this video and it will help explain and set up our discussion for this week, okay? So I'm going to hit play here and as I mentioned, uh, we're going to look at a simulation here that Matthew's developed, um, I'm going to pause here, uh, and the, the, of, of scenarios and self-driving cars driving in these scenarios. So the first scenario is what's called the school bus scenario, right? Uh, and it operates with what is called the humanist algorithm. And this is an algorithm that Matthew or whoever just thought up of and invented, right? Uh, it's a pretty generic algorithm, one might say. Uh, if you read here, the humanist algorithm shares the damage among all the people involved in the crash. If possible, deaths are avoided. Less damage is inflicted to the weakest group of a given population, which is the most vulnerable to physical trauma, such as children, elders, and so on. So we're now in the simulation, okay? Uh, this kind of makes things a little more clear. This is the school bus scenario. There is a school bus up there. There is a car driving towards the school bus. Uh, they are about to hit one another. And what is going on right now is the car is taking in data, right? You can see it's, it's finding out paths, path finding, right? It's trying to think, well, what path can I do to avoid this school bus? It's doing risk analysis. You'll see collision odds are 100%. The children death risk is 2%, right? Uh, there are 16 children on the bus. Collision odds, 21% on this path, different in this path. Um, so again, this is how, this is the, the car is collecting data that's gonna inform a decision here, right? That's gonna inform how the humanist algorithm operates. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the car took a one path right into the bus and uh, you get some idea of what happened. Um, and you get a little risk risk report at the end, or a damage report. Um, I'm just going to pause there. Uh, again, uh, you'll see that the, the algorithm operating the vehicle was the humanist algorithm. The crash conclusion was a frontal collision with the bus is the fairest output because the two others could lead to death cases. So there were three options uh, by the car calculated that it could take, right? And uh, it chose one because it's the fairest output. Uh, because the two others could lead to death cases, something that the humanist algorithm tries to avoid at all costs, right? So really high level, quick overview of algorithm, a scenario, and kind of some logic behind the algorithm after a crash happens, right? So let's look at a few other algor algorithms and how they operate uh, in the same uh, scenario, right? So school bus scenario. Now we have what's called the protectionist ethics algorithm, right? I'm just going to pause there for a second. Let's read what the protectionist algorithm says, Slim, or how it operates. Similar to how our cars are designed, the protectionist algorithm attempts to protect the vehicle and its driver at all costs. This algorithm is safe from a user perspective, but unsafe for everyone else because it dismisses everything and everyone to preserve the user's safety, okay? So a uh, little background on this type of algorithm, quite different than the humanist algorithm. Let's see what happens. Same scenario, right? The car once again 
taking in data to inform its decision, to inform how the algorithm will operate in this particular scenario, detects obstacles, detects the bus, should do the path calculation once again, all right? Same paths, okay? But perhaps different calculations now because of how the, of this particular algorithm, all right? Okay, you have three paths. You could read the collision odds, the injuries, and you can make a guess which one is this car gonna take with the protectionist algorithm. And now things become a little more serious, right? Because we see the school bus, everyone on that school bus is now rolling off the highway, potentially uh, uh, dead, right? Um, and we're gonna look at the crash report. Again, this is the protectionist algorithm, right? No matter how many children are on that school bus, the self-driving car, the autonomous vehicle has to keep its owner safe. That is the crash conclusion. That is the logic. That is what happens when you run a protectionist algorithm with this car. Everyone on that school bus goes over the bridge uh, while the car safely avoids um, the bus and, and, and keeps the driver safe, right? So you might want to be thinking right now, what's right and wrong in this case, right? Which algorithms should we have in our society? Uh, and those types of really basic questions, right? Let's look at one more algorithm in this same scenario, right? Just to kind of further our understanding. Now, uh, same scenario, school bus scenario. Now, uh, we're not the humanist algorithm or the protectionist algorithm, we're the profit-based algorithm, okay? Uh, which reads, new insurance policies are emerging for autonomous vehicles crashes. The profit-based algorithm chooses the best possible outcome depending on the user's insurance policy. It also tries to favor the protection of famous people, such as celebrities or politicians. Interesting, right? So again, uh, taking in different types of data related to insurance and favoring not just the driver, uh, but famous people. So let's see what happens in this case. Same scenario. Car and bus, getting the user's information. Now we're getting the user's insurance information, right? I assume on both the, the school bus and the car. Sixteen children once again calculated on the school bus. Same type of predictive risk analysis, right? Now I assume whoever is driving this car really matters. If it's a celebrity, this algorithm might again throw the bus uh, off the bridge and save the driver, right? But let's see what happens. Crash costs, we have financial calculations being factored into the data right now. That's informing the algorithm. Okay, and the car is taken off the bridge this time. Let's see what the crash conclusion says, okay? Dealing with physical and psychological trauma when children are injured could be quite expensive. Because the owner of the autonomous vehicle has cheap insurance, the only output he can afford is the cheapest one, which is jumping out of the bridge to avoid causing any damage to the children. Okay? Uh, again, we encourage you to download the software, this software that Matthew has uh, uh, actually made freely available. Um, and you could run four different scenarios with these three different algorithms. Uh, setting politics aside, Donald Trump makes an appearance in one of these, and you can see how that influences the profit-based algorithm. Um, this gives us a little lens into this topic of the ethics of self-driving cars. So for our discussion this week, okay, uh, using the profit, protectionist, and humanist algorithms as examples, okay, invent and name a different algorithm to operate an autonomous vehicle. This can be anything. There's no bad answer, right? Creativity is encouraged, okay? Uh, describe a bit about how your algorithm works. Oh, you know, just high level, just like we did in those videos, just like those videos were showing. Uh, and also talk a little bit about what data informs your algorithm. So in those scenarios and simulations we just looked at, the types of data informing those algorithms were really, really important, okay? Uh, and if you really struggle with this, okay, on our discussion forums, um, uh, if you're like, ah, I don't know what to do, uh, a significant response, you know, a really good response, a meaty response, a reflection on one of your peers' posts can also count as your post, okay? Uh, we're not going to give you extra credit for this, but if you can, we really encourage it. Draw and post a diagram to show how your algorithm operates 
in a particular scenario, right? We'd love to see folks visually represent their algorithm, their scenarios. Uh, we think it's a powerful way to do this. Uh, typically when we do this in an in-person class, right, we'll, we'll put you all in groups. Uh, you'll actually download the software uh, on Matthew's site. You'll run all the scenarios and simulations, and then you'll do exactly this, but you'll have to visually represent your algorithm. So we're not going this far with our discussion post, but we encourage you, if you'd like, if you're a visual person, go ahead and try to describe your algorithm in whatever way you see fit. It'll be great for the class. Um, so we're going to kind of sum up this little snapshot with a few other uh, things that might be of interest. If you haven't heard of these two books, uh, we think a lot of you might be really interested in them. Okay, the first on the left is Weapons of Math Destruction uh, by Kathy O'Neill. Extends the topic of algor how algorithms and data science systems uh, can promote inequality, undermine democratic decision making in all sorts of uh, areas of society. This is relevant to teachers and how you're assessed. Uh, many examples in this book are from teaching. Um, others are related to uh, incarceration rates, these types of things. Okay, so really uh, fairly provocative, famous book. And likewise, the second book, Automating Inequality, kind of a different view on the same type of topic by Virginia Eubanks. So uh, we really encourage you, if you haven't heard these books, take, take a quick skim. Uh, they're really worth knowing for the larger topic of, of um, around ethics and computing, right? Um, and the last thing we'll say for those of you who are interested in teaching, uh, this is something called the Responsible Computer Science Challenge. Um, this is a really uh, uh, very new, important effort to know about if you're interested in thinking about the relation of teaching ethics, computer science ethics, uh, in a variety of settings. So we encourage you to take a look at it. Uh, teaching ethics, ethics and computing have, have kind of been center for this video and our week this week. Uh, so we just wanted to make these resources available. Once again, we hope you're doing all well. We want this to be kind of a fun, exciting discussion for the week. And uh, we can't wait to read what algorithms you come up with, right? So, uh, okay, have a good week.